Jinak k tomu, jestli mi chcete představit, tak freelancer a vlastně poslední dva roky všechno, co dělám, dělám s presencem, mm-hmm. protože prostě mám těch věcí příliš mnoho, ale není to, jinak to už nebylo možné. To bylo takové funkční. To zatím je Ty chlapy, co jsou obvykle super, ale v tomto případě ne. No, tady mi to bylo to A bylo to tam už. OK, uh, welcome everybody on, a, on the talk about the Ansible. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you uh, to be quiet because we don't have uh, additional audio system in this room, so if you want to leave the room, please be, uh, be quiet and uh, try to uh, not clap the door. Uh, I would like to ask you to uh, bring us feedback about the talk. Uh, about the talk. Uh, you can see uh, the Twitter channels and uh, uh, everything on, on the back side of, uh, of the leaflet. And uh, I think that uh, That's uh, that's probably uh, from the organization things. Uh, there will be a short break uh, at uh, uh, 13.50 or uh, uh, 14 uh, o'clock. And so um, in the first part uh, we will have the presentation. In the second part uh, there will probably be demo of Ansible usage. Um, Oh. And I think we will start in about 10 minutes because uh, my HDMI reduction to VGA is apparently not working well. I will need a computer. Okay, With, so uh, uh, we will we will solve somehow the computer issues and sorry for that. Uh, we will start in 10 minutes. Um, Určitě. Co tam máte za systém? To dal sedmička. Jo, Linux. Nějaký Linux. To mi to Co by to bylo? Oh, tak. Co se? Tak to dáme na to VGAčku. A tohle to dělají některý výkci. No, tak jestli vědět. bude potřeba přetáhnout ten... Tady to má? Tady to má. Hmm. Uh, jestli bude přetáhnout tu uh-huh. prezentaci. Tak. Tady je to jedno slovo. Oh. Ano. Is there anyone who can use magic? Because I'm not sure what happened now. It suddenly works, so let's hope it will stay that way. And uh, just to be sure, uh, another one to...
funguje. Okay. Oh. It looks it works. So let oh. me introduce introduce you David Carban. He is freelancer and uh, he uses Ansible uh, for uh, automation of, of his uh, job tasks for at least two years. So he will tell you how to use Ansible to automate the tasks in your in infrastructure and uh, how how to use it to make your life easier. Okay. Thank you. It's yours. And, uh, First thing, uh, I will uh, do some introduction, uh, tell you what is Ansible, what this does, and uh, how it works. But uh, in the second part, we will try something. So I need for, uh, I need you to have it uh, actually installed. So I see not everyone has Notebook. Oh, well, actually almost everyone has it. Good. And if you don't have Ansible installed, please go on the... Ansible installation page and uh, install it. And if you don't have a Git, install it too. Uh, I've heard the rumors that there's some USB stick in that uh, with virtual machine that you maybe have here, and there should be Ansible on that virtual machine too. Not sure if it really happened. So if you don't have a USB stick, just install it from the uh, web page. Well, maybe I should ask first, is here anyone who don't have Ansible installed? Okay. Um, we, we have a bunch of USB sticks uh, there. I don't know if it is really true that there is a virtual machine on it, but you may try. Yeah, there is no image you can use. Okay. So uh, we have. So just raise your hands if you, if you need one. And please return it back because uh, it's used for other workshops. So uh, while you will be installing it or looking if it's on the stack, uh, I will go through some basics, some basic architecture and uh, things like that. Uh, the main thing uh, why I use Ansible is uh, I tried Puppet uh, and uh, read quite a lot about uh, Chef, uh, not Slack that time, but uh, I was like, uh, I have to go on the server and install the agent to start provisioning it. And it looked like it's, um, well, it should not be necessary. And then I found out Ansible with a very easy SSH uh, style of working. Well, actually, it's ag agentless. If you have access uh, on the server through SSH or on the computer, I'm mainly working uh, like uh, as a Linux administrator, so uh, I'm working with servers. So if I say server, it's computer. Uh, okay. And uh, it's uh, agentless. If you have access to SSH, you can provision it by uh, Ansible instantly without any configuration on the server side. And uh, it's secure because it's using SSH, and if, well, 
if SSH will be un uh, unsecure, we are doomed, so never mind. And uh, it can do provisioning eh? and deployment. You can use the one tool to set up the machine, uh, configure <coughs> any stack you need there, and then do a rolling update. For example, you have several web servers. You can do things like uh, shut down server, update, uh, take it from load balancer, update it, uh, uh, put it back, and do it for every uh, server in a stack or something like that. Uh, Puppet and Chef mainly can uh, configure your server but cannot do rolling updates. It's possible they have some add-ons to be it possible, but it, it seems like it's more, co it's another complication for me. In Ansible, it's quite easy and it, it just works. It's, uh, like that. Oh, uh, am I loud enough? Can you hear me on the, oh, okay, perfect. So let's hope my voice bill will be able to, <coughs> I will be able to speak in an hour. Uh, it's also easy to start, we'll see it in uh, an hour, you will be able to provision some things uh, without a problem. Don't try to do this the same with Puppet, you will, have, you will need at least two days to get to the similar stage. And uh, the important thing, it's not programming language, because I'm, I'm a Linux administrator, I'm not a programmer. Actually, I, I can code something, it's more like gluing together some parts of code and for little scripts, okay. But uh, I'm not a programmer, I don't like to do something bigger than 10 lines of any code. And uh, well, maybe that's why I don't like Puppet because it's uh, technically programming language too. Uh, Ansible is more like uh, you tell what you need, you define the final state you want on the server and it will uh, ensure it's there. So it, you will say, I want the uh, Apache there with this configuration, and it will happen. And, uh, well, it's it input. Uh, I don't know how to spell this word. Sorry. Uh, it's, uh, but it means that if you run Ansible on your computers uh, several times, it will not change anything if uh, there's nothing. Uh, well, maybe I will try to say it another way. Uh, if you first start Ansible provisioning on the bare server, it will set up a bunch of things. But if you start it again, it will not do anything. It will not change any file because the system is in desired state. And uh, if, there, uh, if you change the prescription, uh, you change, for example, you want new Apache version, you upload new RPM or uh, add another repository, then it will change all the parts that, is, that are changed in the prescription. It will not uh, change anything more. Was that understandable? For me personally, the agentless is the killer feature. I just can provision every computer because it, uh, it's a part of my job. I'm a freelancer, I have a bunch of clients and uh, every client has its own servers. I cannot use, uh, cannot install a Puppet agent on every server and uh, even if I could, I would have to install a Puppet server for every customer which is just Nonsense. Uh, with Ansible, I just have a separate directory for separate clients, and uh, I have uh, the SSH access, and I can work on it without a problem. And now, the second question I forgot to ask at the beginning. Uh, do you know Ansible? Is, is here anyone who work with Ansible? Oh, good. I'm not sure, uh, I will tell some, uh, something new for you here. But you may ask, uh, maybe that, that will be more interesting in the second part. But uh, I will go through the mostly basics for now. 
So, if you want to manage many computers uh, at once, you need some inventory. <laughs> you need some uh, uh, to take information uh, about the uh, servers. So, uh, it <coughs> Ansible has two types of inventory. The first one is static. Uh, do you have already installed it? You should have Ansible now. So let's look in uh, your Ansible hosts file. Try to. Uh, help me yeah. presentation. Uh, uh, it's small, I guess. Okay. So easy. <laughs> Let's try it. Oh. oh. Two more. What now? Okay, perfect. And uh, this is a static inventory. It's quite simple. You just define a group and uh, the servers in the group. You don't have even defined group. You see, there's just host names or uh, IP addresses, or you can define the group and put some uh, se uh, servers there. The groups are used mainly for um, some logical uh, isolation of servers. You can have web servers, uh, database servers, or servers in uh, one data center, or servers on a different one. You can uh, run Ansible on groups of servers uh, or combination of groups without quite a problem. You can use some uh, uh, wildcard type of uh, writing, like uh, intervals. Uh, uh, dot. And uh, actually, it's simple. You have a file where your infrastructure is described. That's the static inventory. Ansible has a possibility to use a dynamic inventory which is technically the script that uh, taps into your database or on Amazon or Rackspace or any other cloud uh, provider and uh, fetch the information about your hosts. So uh, if you don't <coughs> want to enter every server into your host files, you can write or use uh, dynamic inventory script and uh, you can do the things like uh, you provision new host on the Amazon and it's instantly there and you can work with that. But for now, you know what inventory is. Now, the module. Uh, module is uh, something that uh, just j that does one task. Uh, it's like, uh, for example, copy a file, use a template, or set up user on the remote server, create new uh, Amazon instance, uh, or modify host files. Every action that you want to do remotely is uh, done by module. There are even two not so good modules, uh, that uh, command and shell, which just run shell commands. If you really, really need it, you can do, uh, you can run arbitrary commands uh, with Ansible. It's usually, if you don't have a module specifically for your use, for your need, it's somehow better to write one than use shell because uh, with uh, module it's easier to be and uh, that, that word uh, idempotent or well I would just spell it randomly every time I would tell it and you know what I mean uh, there are hundreds of modules if you know if you want you can go on the documentation and well I can show you uh, I have it here, actually, this. It's just huge. See, that's almost everything. Modules for installation of software on servers, 
some big IP, whatever it is, uh, bundler for uh, Ruby people, uh, things like uh, setting up cron or copy files. Oh, what is float stack? Oh, I don't know if this exists really. Uh, for uh, modules for DigitalOcean, quite a bunch of modules for Amazon. It's, it's like, well, you need something on Amazon, not a problem. And, uh, well, you will more likely find a module for the work you need than uh, don't. It's very RVM for ZFS for OpenStack, uh, and uh, I can just scroll down and you have the idea. Uh, so we have the inventory, we know about our servers and <coughs> we can do something there. One more thing we need, uh, it's uh, variables. Uh, usually you need to have some uh, better, uh, good abstraction, you need uh, some variable like uh, well, anything you need to uh, describe. There are several groups of uh, variables in uh, Ansible, or better, several places when you can set up them. It's uh, on sev several levels. As we have seen in inventory file, there can be definition of groups, and you have so named uh, group vars. Then uh, there you can define the variables for the web server group, like uh, the port where uh, Apache is uh, waiting for, uh, listening for. Or you can uh, have defined variable for the server, except one server you need, uh, and you can define it in inventory too. It was probably somewhere in that uh, template inventory we looked at. And uh, there are special, uh, there are <coughs> another type of variables that's facts that are taken from the <coughs> remote server. If you, you can now, if you have Ansible installed, you can now try this line. And this will run the setup module that <coughs> fetches all data about your computer. And I will try it here. Simple. And, yes. and, and yes, I forgot the localhost. And you can see Ansible is talking to with JSON. And there's quite a bunch of, I hope there's no password. I think no password there. Uh, afraid of scrolling down a little now. Uh, oh, IPv6 address. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can see there's quite a bunch of information uh, and uh, about my IP address. Don't DOS me now. Um, device, oh, so, oh, hard drive, so, everything you may need. Yes, I'm running on Debian. Maybe interesting. And um, Jesse, so you'll see that I have stable distribution now. Uh, oh, 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 that was not nice. Some environmental pro pro variable. I will have to change some keys, I guess. And um, you can see there's really many, many info, uh, types of processor, disk, disk sizes, disk usage, uh, and uh, the host name of computer, uh, Ethernet devices, and almost everything you can know, uh, you want to know about the computer. And uh, host on KVM. No, uh, no, okay, and it's not 100% uh, uh, precise because, yeah, host, not guest. Okay, it's okay. <coughs> the KVM is there, actually. So I can, uh, with the setup module, I can get a bunch of information about uh, the computer I'm on, I'm provisioning. The thing is, uh, even if you have uh, Puppet or Chef installed, Ansible will detect their factor and uh, add their facts to Ansible facts. So you, if you want it even uh, longer, just install Puppet and you will see. Uh, well, here. And <coughs> so 
So now we are. What happened here? Hmm. There is something. Oh. Now, uh, we've been speaking about modules and inventory and uh, variables. Now, task. Task is uh, one little part that uh, will use module and do the thing you need from it. Play is a set of tasks. So it's like if you need provision of watch, you need more than only one task, only install it. You need to upload uh, configuration, uh, restart it, and things like that. And a playbook is a set of plays. Uh, you can provision in one uh, run, you can provision web servers and MySQL servers without a problem. Uh, just one play will be web servers, second play will be uh, MySQL servers, and uh, the third one will be load balancer. Why not? And we have one additional thing, it's a role. Role is uh, something like function, function in, or maybe, maybe an object in uh, C++. I hope it's object-oriented programming is still a thing. And uh, I learned about it in school 10 years ago, maybe. I don't know if you hear it. So it's a way how to abstract the, the for example, Apache installation completely into, well, into role. And we will show the difference between, between playbook and role in the second part. Now, uh, another thing, <coughs> Uh, tool set. Uh, we tried Ansible command. This is for ad hoc commands. If you need, uh, for example, shut down every web server you have in your uh, every web server, just Ansible means and command and service uh, Apache stop all go. But don't blame me. Don't don't blame me if somebody will complain about that. And the same thing you can. Uh, you can use any module available with one shot and uh, send it on any group or any server you need. So, one time uh, upload of file, installation of uh, any package, or for example, I used it for removal of uh, the not so well provisioned uh, vhost file that shut down my Apache servers on several computers. So I just quickly uh, write uh, down the Ansible uh, command and uh, remove the host file and it was done. <coughs> Ansible playbook takes uh, the play, the uh, playbook, which is the YAML file, and uh, goes through it. Playbook typically has a set of tasks and uh, do something. You will see it in the second part. Now, there exists a hub for uh, Ansible roles. Uh, it's uh, Ansible Galaxy, and uh, uh, there's uh, quite a lot of roles uh, from whoever will upload them. It's, it's a great place for, uh, well, it's like uh, you can download a role if you need something like a web server, MySQL server, any load balancer, or something, well, almost everything. You can look at the Galaxy, and it will be there. I would not say take it and use it. I would say look at it, maybe modify it to fit it into your environment and use it. But it's a perfect place to look and uh, it's uh, and Ansible Galaxy is the command line uh, uh, program that uh, fetched the roles uh, from Galaxy. We will show, it. we will use it. And Ansible World if you need some credentials uh, hidden in your configuration files, the Ansible wo Vault can encrypt it. And uh, we can try to cover it too later. Uh, so, when I've been thinking uh, what can we actually do, try to learn it, I thought about some load balance, high available <laughs> LAMP stack with replicated MySQL. And it would take four hours, maybe more. It was tempting. I, I thought maybe I will be able to stand here for 50 minutes before they will take me away. That, that's the thing. I got an email that uh, I will have only 40 minutes. So I thought, okay, maybe 50 minutes. 
I was pretty sure that after an hour they will take two gorillas will go here and take me out. So I thought we will have to start with something slightly more easy, uh, which we will be able to do in half an hour. So, well, unfortunately, really, in an hour and a half it would be better, but never mind. So, now we'll try to use Ansible to install NTP server. It's, well, it should be easy, and NTP server is quite easy to install and configure. And uh, we will show, I will show you how to do it through playbook, and how to create a role that will have everything, and we will see the differences between it. Um, uh, so, the first. And uh, I have prepared it because I don't like to write if I'm on uh, some workshop, I don't like to write the code, just to write it. So you may now download the repository. It's... Uh, uh, download it. My slides will be on. Uh, we'll share, share it later. Uh, uh, if you go here, uh, I can upload it uh, on, on USB without a problem. Everyone has downloaded it now. So, So, this is the playbook, and uh, at the same time, it's a play. Play always starts with the host's paragraph. Here, I say, tell to Ansible that I provision only local host. That's a single host. There should be a web server, as we have seen in host files. The web server group can be web server, can be even uh, all, which means every computer in the inventory. And there's some uh, play uh, white uh, settings. Become uh, means uh, use sudo to switch uh, to a root user. Uh, well, it actually can use the su. It can maybe use uh, the Windows run as if you configure it. It's configurable in a config file. But by default, it uses the sudo and... Uh, uh, 
and uh, the root user. You can override it if you need it, like write it there. Uh, you can see it's uh, the yum in uh, Ansible right, uh, reads the YAML file. So well, it actually can, uh, I think it can read in JSON file as input, but I have never seen the playbook in gens gens JSON style. And, uh, You can see I have defined some variables here. It's NTP state and servers, and uh, NTP state it's uh, it's variables I'm using uh, further down. I will show you now. Here, there are the tasks that uh, are doing the actual works. There's several section you need. You see, it's for variables for tasks and uh, drawn. There's the handlers which uh, I will explain a little further. Now, I was thinking my work is to provision NTP server, so I try to use it to do it on as many architectures as possible. For this demo, it's on a Red Hat and Debian type of uh, uh, computers, which is majority of what is running on Linux world, I believe. So, um, I will go through every task and uh, say what it's doing. I have some variable definitions here, but I need some vari uh, variables uh, dependent on type of server, because uh, NTP can be NTP on one uh, architecture, it can be NTPD on uh, another one, so I have to choose somehow. And uh, I'm using this little trick, I tell Ansible to include variables in a variables uh, directory, and uh, I'm using the fact, if uh, we'll go back to facts, Ansible setup localhost, and then uh, you can see that one of it is Ansible uh, operation system family which is Debian on Debian and Ubuntu, and the Red Hat on CentOS, Scientific Linux, and Red Hat, of course. And, uh, well, Gen2 and Gen2, uh, whatever. <coughs> so I'm here using a little trick to get the variables uh, for the specific use case, because uh, name of uh, service can change, configuration directories can be different, especially Debian tends to have uh, for MySQL, it's uh, etc MySQ. Uh, MySQL co uh, my, uh, conf for Red Hat, it's like uh, etc my conf and uh, so on. So every service, uh, same service with several architectures can have different paths, names of configuration, and uh, these all things I read from files Red Hat YAML or Debian YAML here. Now, uh, previously, uh, it's not true anymore, but uh, you will see it probably quite uh, in many examples. Uh, there has been uh, the specific package uh, modules, for, uh, different for YOM, for apt. That's why it's uh, twice there. Both uh, tasks install the NTP. The, uh, now Ansible can work with package, has a package module that choose the Package, you need, uh, package manager you need on the architecture you are. So it's a new thing in Ansible 2.0, and uh, so it will be easier to write things like that. But uh, it's also a good thing, no, good place to show you the variable uh, to loops and uh, conditionals. You can see the name is just name. It is what it's shown when you run it. You can see tax. Every task can have one or more tax. Oh, so, okay. Five minutes. I missed ten minutes. Can you show me ten minutes again? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, you can tag every task by many tags. It's uh, and you can uh, then play only the tagged tasks. So you don't have to run provisioning of everything. You can narrow it down on 
NTP or, or a configuration of something like you, uh, not a problem at all. YAM, it's the name of the module and its parameters. You can see it's not YAML. If you are familiar with YAML, it should be written more like uh, this way. It's entirely possible and it will work too. Uh, Ansible prefers to the shorter, more compact way when you write it on one line. Uh, I usually use it because I just don't like too big uh, uh, tasks, but uh, if there is, is far too much uh, parameters, which is technically on cloud modules almost everywhere, I'm uh, using this uh, type of writing uh, because it's uh, more, you can see, go through it uh, better, I think. And uh, there are two things. Uh, you see, I'm using NTP state variable that is defined here, which is present. And this means I actually install it. If it's not there, leave it be if it's there. You can override it to absent. We will show you. No, I will show you. And uh, for now, this means this is present, so install NTP. And here, you see item, which is uh, somehow magic variable because uh, it's working with, with items and NTP packages. Uh, in NTP packages, there are defined the, it's a array of files I want to install or programs. And well, it's NTP only because uh, uh, NTP is so simple, but if you, would install PHP, for example. You wouldn't install uh, PHP and PHP JSON, PHP PDO, and uh, things like that. And with items, cycle through the array and uh, add it here. So this way you can uh, do a loop. You don't have to do task, install one uh, program, install second one, third one. You do it in array, you put it in one place and install it at once. This is the way how Ansible is doing loop, loops uh, on the task level. In the second release, which is like a month old, uh, that it's possible to define blocks and uh, I think you can do a loop uh, through the whole block, but I haven't tried it yet. This is, sometimes this is uh, bad because you can do loop in one task. So if you need two actions, uh, it's really hard to do, but it should be okay with blocks now. Now here is actually and yeah and the when only if Ansible family is Red Hat, which is because Yom is only on Red Hat. I would. It, does anyone has Fedora here with the new package manager? Yeah. Perfect. I want to know if it will work actually. Because I'm not sure if uh, we don't need something like Fedora here. Uh, well, we'll, but we'll see. Perfect. Uh, here it's basically the same thing for Debian. There's one thing more. It's environment. I'm overriding the default environment. Uh, uh, I, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I mentioned it, uh, that uh, there's a package module already, but, uh, well, I'm like thinking in old way still. It's like two years you are using it like this. So um, there I redefined the local environment for run, and uh, it's one thing. I don't like one thing on Debian really much. If you install the server package, it will start it up automatically, well, sometimes. Uh, so this little trick uh, uh, force it to not start it because he, <coughs> Debian thinks it's installed in run level z uh, one, which is a no network run level, and it will not start the package. And uh, I will start it later uh, when I want. Uh, I like the CentOS because, well, if you install package, it's installed, not started. Uh, different things. Uh, uh, next thing, I use the template module uh, with, uh, with NTP configuration. You can see that uh, 
again, I have the different uh, configuration for different architecture. And uh, I upload it whenever that architecture has its config file di directory and uh, config, uh, whatever, whichever it na uh, its name is. Then, I use the notify, which is another thing, that uh, fires only if this tag is changed. Ah. Uh, oh, uh, five more minutes maximum because it's the two last tasks and after the five minutes we will have a break. And, uh, actually, if you run a task, it can be failed if something goes bad. It can be okay, which means uh, nothing changed. And it can be in changed state, that, that something changed. And if it's in changed state, the notify will run a handler, which is uh, defined here in the second part. As you see, this is not tasks and it's handlers. And, but it's a normal task, but it's fired off only if the configuration file has changed. So you don't have to restart uh, any service when, it's, when actually nothing happened. Or you can, for example, if you install the MySQL service, then uh, you can notify uh, and uh, upload the test database, for example. And it will, not be, it will not happen again because you install it only once and it's installed next time. And the uh, last thing is uh, start uh, NTP server if uh, it's installed. And uh, there's a when here, uh, module is service, name of service, and what to do. And uh, the NTP uh, state uh, when uh, we don't want to try to start it if we remove it uh, in a previous step. And this playbook can install or remove the NTP. I will show you how. We will try to start it, but after the uh, break. Cykly, prostě, to je to, 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 to je to
To je fakt, že se tam dojde v tomhle ještě jako dál, než by nebylo jako ale ale It's a bigger change. If you have a new Fedora, uh, it will not work because uh, the YAML module, uh, well, Fedora don't have YAML anymore. So there are several solutions, and uh, most easy for you if you have Fedora is change YAML for the DNF. DNF, I guess. You can try to change it to package if you have Ansible 2. And later it will work too. But if you have uh, the 192 version, which is in default uh, Apple repository, so it's possible you have it, uh, the DNF will be okay. Uh, the other option would be add another task and uh, use the Ansible distribution fact. That uh, would uh, show you it's a Fedora, it's not Red Hat. But uh, Ansible OS, fam uh, OS family uh, is Red Hat for uh, is Red Hat for Fedora too, so it would not work so easily. So no. If we look in the directory, there's uh, the template and uh, quars uh, directories. The template is, uh, well, template, you know what template is. And uh, here it is for uh, to show you how you can implement several uh, configurations. Because sometimes, really, that configuration file can be uh, merged to one. On NTP, for example, it would be possible to have just ntp.conf and uh, go with that. Uh, if you try it with Apache 2.2 uh, and Apache 2.4, it will be much harder. It's still Apache, but it's very different, and it's uh, better to ha have two templates for basic configuration. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you can see how it's done. Here and uh, we can look at the template to see some things that will happen there. The first line here is Ansible managed. 
This is uh, the magic variable that is defined in a uh, configuration file. It's something like uh, this file is created by Ansible uh, at this time from this directory by this user. You can define it uh, wh whatever, uh, whichever way you want. And uh, it's a good placeholder for anyone. If you see, oh, it's done by Ansible, don't edit it by your hand because it will be lost sooner or later. You can see that the variable starts with the double, well, hmm, harm says this, hmm, this. And uh, actually, if you know Jinja, it's just Jinja. There's uh, the example of for loop. You can have the conditionals, there's uh, filters. You can find more on Ansible documentation about Jinja too, uh, what you can use here. We have NTP server's uh, variable defined, which is array of server that servers that should be used. And uh, I just uh, loop through it and uh, generate four lines, uh, server, variable, and uh, a burst. The Red Hat and Debian are, uh, configurations are uh, quite different, even if, if I try to show you differences, uh, then you, you can see they're actually quite different. But uh, I, I think it's uh, more like uh, if you have time and want that, that you really can do one NTP conf without a problem. Uh, another one, direct, another directory is variables, and uh, uh, you see that uh, the first uh, task in the playbook is to load these variables, and you see for Debian it will load the se uh, set of packages and config files and the default servers. Thus, for Red Hat. NTP is same in this, but the name of service is different. Uh, and configuration is same in here. And different servers. And they are then used in the play, in the tasks run. So let's try to run it. Now, uh, if you will use it as I will on localhost now, you will need uh, to provide a pseudo password. If you don't if you are not able to switch to root, well, I cannot imagine you are not. So let's uh, try it. Uh, wait, maybe you can uh, create the window so that you are starting. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I see. Sorry. And yeah. Start. That will not work. Is it better? <coughs> now, uh, we, uh, Ansible Playbook is the command line that uh, runs a play, and it's uh, ntp.yaml is the file where the play is. So I try to run it, and I will need to enter the sudo password because I cannot switch to sudo without password, which is the minus key. Now I run it, and I have cows enabled. So that's a great feature in uh, Ansible 2. Uh, you can have a random cow, cow at every task. But uh, well, <laughs> and there's nice cows. It's like a, there's a big dragon actually. I didn't know about cow say before I tr started using Ansible. Nice memory. Okay, you can see uh, the cow it, uh, tells us there's a play and it starts a setup. By default, if you start uh, the play on a computer, on any computer, it uh, first automatically calls setup module to get the variables from that uh, computer. 
which is what happens here. And uh, here you see uh, there's actually the name I have uh, put into the YAML file, just to know in which uh, stage it is. You see, I'm on Debian, so it's skipping the uh, Red Hat package installation, and it uh, tells me that I do have NTP already installed because it's okay; it's not installing anything. And uh, here I had uh, different configuration, so it changed. And uh, here it's okay again because NTP is running. Now, but I need to restart it because. Uh, the configuration has changed. So, and I think I will try uh, thinking how to disable the cows. Uh, cows. Will be better. <coughs> ah, so that's more. I think it's not so much fun anymore. But uh, you see, I have run it a second uh, time and uh, changed R zero is zero because nothing new happened. Now, let's say that I would uh, damage somehow my NTP configuration. <coughs> Like, do, oh no, 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 somebody is deleting that. And now I can run it again, but I will run it in check mode. And I want to see the differences. And you can see there would be two changes. Nothing happened. If I run it again in check mode, it will uh, again show me two changes because uh, it's not doing it. And I can see, okay, somebody deleted this part of file. So Ansible will put it back and restart NTP. So we will know it's working again. Okay. That's the thing. I, okay, we have 10 minutes left, so I will fast forward it because uh, uh, that was a playbook. One file where you have everything uh, on one <coughs> place. Uh, so now uh, I need it here. We've been talking that Ansible Galaxy is a tool that installs Galaxy RAW for you. And uh, the David Carbon is my GitHub account and DevConf uh, 2016 and TP role is in the role uh, that do the same thing as our playbook, but it's in the role itself, itself. So you can see the differences and you can install it by Galaxy tool. So, uh, and uh, if only 10 minutes left, I guess. It will be your homework to look at that, I fear. Uh, you will see mostly that uh, the role has separate directories for tasks, for variables, for handlers. So what is in one place in playbook, it's in several directories by the logical uh, thing. You will see the exactly same tasks there, uh, but uh, it's more structured and it's reusable because this playbook, uh, the thing, is this playbook was specifically for host localhost. If you want to share it with someone, he would probably want to change the groups. But if you have a role, uh, you can uh, do a minimal playbook like uh, hosts, localhost, use rule, role, NTP. And the other uh, person will download the role and use hosts, my old servers, role, NTP. And it will use the NTP on, uh, setup on uh, everything. The row itself cannot uh, itself cannot be run, and uh, it's uh, but it's easy to run it. Uh, 
Um, all you need is uh, it's like this. Okay. This is the equivalent for the playbook. It's a little shorter, uh, but it's because the NTP role is the separate in uh, the another place, and you can use it on uh, any bunch of hosts you, you need. And this is playbook, so you can uh, run it with Ansible playbook and this NTP, and it will do the same. Playbooks can be uh, more complicated. If I need, I can, for uh, example, uh, Do some debug message. And you can combine uh, the tasks and roles. Uh, one important thing uh, in Ansible, uh, in Puppet, uh, you define uh, something what should be applied on server, and Puppet define uh, when it will apply it, in which ordering. In Ansible, it's much easier from top to down. So if you define uh, your playbook, and the Apache will be first, you know, the Apache is the first thing that is provisioned. And uh, I personally find it, uh, again, easier. It's uh, more easy for me because I know if it fails, if the playbook run fails, it's usually because I've made a mistake. Sometimes the Puppet, uh, it is said that if Puppet fails, it means you have uh, not defined the dependencies well. But somehow I found, uh, myself unable to define them well. Uh, but that's maybe, uh, as I said, uh, the puppet is really not my thing. It may be a problem in me. But if you have the same problem, Ansible may work better for you. So, and, uh, this is it. And this is me. Uh, I thought about including a photo, but uh, you know, real life is better. Let's hope. Yeah, but the true is the photo is photoshopped. It won't, maybe would be better than me. No. Oh, never mind. And uh, if you want to ask anything, uh, we have uh, about five minutes left. So. <laughs> uh, never mind. My voice is beginning to uh, clap. Okay. So, uh, we are using Chef uh, in our company. Chef uh, is uh, yeah. We are using Chef in our company. Chef uh, is uh, working with the agent, similar to what we do. So, my question would be what is the preferred way to manage all the the <coughs> variables for something like SSH keys and uh, I am going it from top down. I have group all and I define that group all has this SSH keys. And uh, then the group web server needs these keys for these users. And the hosts, some hosts have uh, different needs. So I create a variable for SSH keys there. So I define uh, I just define which keys I need on uh, which servers. And, uh, and I have Ansible role that will take the variable SSH keys and apply, apply the keys there. I need one key to get there at the beginning to be able to provision it. Of course. But uh, what, when I have uh, 200 servers, and I need 20 different keys for those 200 servers <coughs> to apply NTB on those servers. How? Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible. I will. 
Mm. Uh, I will look. I will look into the inventory if there's possibility to define the key to use with file server. I, we can uh, look at that after we uh, whip it. I'm not sure because I'm uh, I have the one key every, every time, so I want to look at that actually. Okay. I, I think I if it's possible I know what to look, but uh, it might take some. No, who, who first? <laughs> okay. and, uh, no, no, no. Uh, is there a way to get standard out, standard error in a clear way? I don't know if you have a dash B, dash BB, it gives you more information on your output. But is there a way to execute a play or a command? You mean it just to get raw text without all of the declaration? And uh, you mean uh, if you want uh, only informations, if it's okay? Uh, I'm not sure I follow. Well, sometimes there's, there's standard out that will come out. Uh, if you do the dash VV or dash VVV, it starts giving more robust yeah. information. So I was wondering if there's a way to just get that output that's not wrapped in the Ansible. Uh, not uh, directly with Ansible playbook, okay. but you can uh, create the uh, yeah. callback. Thank you. Callback plugin that will uh, send the information to you. Uh, you the callback plugin works in a way task is done and information about task is uh, uh, pushed to callback plugin and uh, it's going to another task. So you will uh, you will have your plugin that will take information. For example, log the way you want. Okay. Can you use it for virtual programming or for programming? Sorry? Can you use it for programming? I mean, can you use console for the service? Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, this week I've been uh, creating the architecture for my uh, immutable architecture for one of my customers. Uh, and it's, and it's uh, like uh, I run Ansible now and it creates uh, Amazon. Uh, VPC, load balancer, RDS instance, uh, load the database, create uh, the AMI image for uh, web server and deploy the web servers. So is it using like a star file or using that by supported? Well, it's, uh, I provisioned the web server by Ansible. Uh, not to, that Amazon has a cloud something uh, that can provision it too. I'm using Ansible for, install, uh, for creating a camera uh, instance. I <coughs> install Apache, uh, configure it, PHP, and all of the environment for client, and then pack it into an image. And then I deploy it. It's uh, like, uh, if I need another version, I just provision it again, and uh, create another image. It's uh, it's kind of interesting thing, actually, because uh, that way you, uh, may have the image mostly read only and uh, if there's another deploy you just need <coughs> another one. It looks like it mainly works, but it uh, it's, looks like it's a work. But uh, actually I just run one JavaScript and it creates the image. Provision it, create, and to change it, uh, deploy it to uh, production. Or testing or... <coughs> Uh, well, you don't have a, a API uh, that Amazon provides you, but you can have load balancer, for example, HA proxy, and uh, Apache behind it, and it can work the same way. Uh, well, not the image file. You will provision the physical server and create the all on day. You just need to install. For example, for the physical server, start deploying, and then. But it, it's possible to do it too. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's the same actually. You have the bar server with SSH, and that's what you need to do anything on that bit answer. And it doesn't matter if it's a physical hardware or a virtual server or a container or anything. Uh, I Uh, no, uh, I have seen a billing is uh, somehow issue.
issue for me. It's like uh, five thousand dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah, but there is also open source version of it. Of it. Uh, I never needed it really. Okay. Uh, just I heard now my colleague was on the config management camp, and uh, maybe the tower will be open sourced yeah. in the future. It's like maybe in the future. Uh, well, let's go because. Uh, Ansible Tower is an uh, enterprise solution that uh, really can do, well, it's nice graphs for management, but it can do much more than that. It, uh, for example, it automatically takes the state of every package on uh, the computer so you can go to history, see what changed, uh, see what packages were updated when, and uh, have a bunch of stuff like uh, somebody can run this playbook and not the other. And uh, it's good, uh, but it's really not cheap. Any other question? Is there any any module management system like on top of this, like open library or RPK? Oh well, Very definitely good. all modules are in Ansible. But in the library, you can say, uh, "Hey, I'm I'm a fresh machine, and I installed like NTP version, but NTP module version." Oh, and well, uh, they have modules and versioning of the modules so you can like, build your uh, basic environment for the Ansible. I, I think I didn't follow this. Um, uh, what is a module in Puppet? Uh, what do you mean by module? Uh, module is a collection of classes with but some purpose. That's the role in Ansible. Uh, Mm, yeah, or can. collection of roles, it can be you know, what you are talking about. For, for example, for, for installing and uh, setting up a PP, there is a module which you can download. That's a role, what you can probably. Uh, there's Ansible Galaxy. Try Galaxy Ansible Combo. Uh -huh. And there's a bunch of roles, and uh, it's like the, there's a role you need. Uh, I have said it before uh, download it, look at it, and then run it. Uh, it's like everyone can upload the role there, and frankly, my roles, I have quite a lot of roles on Ansible uh, Galaxy, and uh, I hope you will not look at them. <laughs> it's there because I need uh, them at customers, so it's easier for me to download it from Gal uh, Galaxy, but, well, I'm improving them, but it's not like uh, everybody can download them. And I have quite a big feeling that the most of the roles are there of this quality. But it can be downloaded and you can look at it and modify it to your environment and it's working with our code. And there's the last question. Just one to ask about uh, the Ansible pool possibility. Because I have some servers behind the firewall. So, yeah, it's so what's uh, the preferred solution? For if you cannot, uh, if you don't have because in Ansible you need master server and you must have SSH to the uh, provision there. You can have Ansible pool. There's even a binary Ansible pool and I missed it when I prepared this session, sorry. And uh, it, uh, what it does basically, it downloads the Git repository, you enter to it and run it. In the Git repository you have a playbook usually and uh, so it uh, actual, uh, do uh, uh, Git clone or checkout or something and run Ansible playbook. So it's possible. If you have access to the dead kit repository, uh, whatever it is, uh, on the computer, you can uh, use the Ansible pool. It's, I think it's not used much often because uh, Ansible is uh, mostly a push line. But uh, it's a possibility. You can have cron job Ansible pool and uh, it will download the actual provision YAML configuration and run it. And it's done. But you have to install Ansible on every computer you are uh, managed by that. You are managing by that. But sometimes it's it's just necessary. Okay.